So guys, till now we spoke about in detail about the balance sheet and the income statements. Now I hope you remember everything, right? Now if not, it would be very disappointing for us to go. So I request you to go back and watch these videos again so it will be a recap. Now just to give you a quick recap myself, the balance sheet tells us how much a company owns or and owes at a point of time, while the income statement basically tells us how much a company has earned in profit after paying all its expenses. Now we come to the cash flow statement. Now you might be wondering, is it even important for us? It's only profit and loss and balance sheet. Well, it is important because the cash flow statement tells us how much cash a company generates and what it does with this cash. Now you're thinking, didn't we cover this in the income statement? No, the answer is not. Answer is no, right? The income statement or the profit and loss statement tells us how much profit a company is making, but that doesn't tell you how much cash it is generating, right? Now, why? We will answer this in this video. Now, what is a cash flow statement? Now, as mentioned earlier, the cash flow statement is important because it shows us how much cash has been generated by the company. The income statement contains a lot of non-cash expenses and revenue, which the statement of cash flow excludes. Now, let me give you an example. Don't worry. If a company has made a lot of sales on credit. then they get recorded in the income statement as revenue and this leads to an increase in profit but not in the cash flow the cash flow statement however excludes this and only records money that has entered the bank account now the cash flow statement of a company basically has been split into three parts now the first part is called cash flow from operations or cfo now this is the cash generated from the operations of a business simple right it is the amount of money that a company brings in the form of ongoing business activities Now to get this we need to add back all the non cash expenses and subtract all the non cash revenue right so if a company sells its goods and services on credit then that is subtracted from the net profit since the company didn't get this cash in return it gave it in credit now similarly if a company receives any goods or services for which for which it has not been paid yet then that needs to get added to the net profit as there was not any cash in board now the second thing we will look at is the cash flow from investing activities Okay so when a company generates cash from its operations it must decide what to do with it but we are not the only ones who invest the money in the companies as well right the cash flow from investing comprises the net cash flow generated from the investment related activities of a company now this includes purchase of and sale of fixed assets like capital expenditure or capex it also includes purchase and sale of financial assets such as stocks and bonds now if a company uses its cash to buy or acquire another company even that gets recorded in investing activities now the third thing we look at is cash flow from financing now we come to the cash flow from financing activities as we know companies generate capital by issuing stocks okay equity or stocks and they issue debt by taking loans now all the cash generated from this right should be added back into the net net cash flow and it is added in the financing activities element now there are two different aspects to this companies also pay back their loans right so they when they pay back their loans they also pay their shareholders in the form of dividends or buybacks so the cash that is paid out in terms of repaying debt or the cash that is paid out in terms of dividends or buybacks is all subtracted from calculating in the net cash flow from financing activities now I understand this was some heavy stuff but before moving ahead let me tell you some quick tips on how to read the cash flow statement so you don't have to do too much problem right now look at the tips while analyzing the cash flow statement we must keep an eye on for the following things as an investor now ideally the cash flow from operations must not be significantly lower than the net profit right if it is consistently significantly lower than the net profit that means that it takes a long time for the company to convert its investments in inventory and other resources into cash flow from sales now this can cause a lot of liquidity problems and can even lead to insolvency or bankruptcy for small companies the cash flow from investing activities over a number of years can reflect the company's strategy and vision like for example if a company has been investing in real assets capital expenditure for the last 4 to 5 years then it means that it is looking to expand organically now on the other hand a company might look to grow through acquisitions like taking over another company or not look to invest a lot at all which in the case maybe it is a matured company now the cash generated from operations is used for capital expenditure and paying off debt as shown in the cash flow statement now the cash remaining after this is called free cash flow to equity okay so fcf to equity or other people call it fcfe now this is the cash that the equity investors are entitled to a healthy free cash flow to equity signifies that the company is generating sufficient cash for from its for its investors and it is a very good sign to be invested in such a company so we should always look at this particular metric now where to find the cash flow statement on the grow website 
So let's look at this. So I'll take you through a cash flow statement on the Grow website for giving you an example. And we will look at the cash flow statement of this company called HUL or Hindustan Unilever. And you can see it on your screen now. Now you see that there is opening cash balance which is 6,200 crores, 7,300 crores year on year till 2021. Immediately below that you see there is cash flow from operating activities which is also known as CFO. Then we have cash flow from investing activities which is cash flow, CFI. And then we have finally cash flow from financial activities as well. Now if you click on these buttons it will open a drop down which shows you everything about this cash flow. Now as you can see these are yearly cash flow statements from 2017 to 2021. However, if you want to, you can also check the quarterly cash flow statement by clicking on the quarterly tab on the top. So as you can see, the opening cash balance of HUL in 2021 was 10,606 crores, which means that it had 10,600 crores in reserve at the start of the year. The net cash flow from operating activities in 2021 was 9,463 crores. And the net cash flow from investing activities and financing activities was minus 1,500 crores and 9,309 crores respectively. Now, this means that there was a lot of cash going out, outflow, right? Whenever it's minus, it's going out. Now, when we add the cash flow from operating activities and the cash flow from investing and the cash flow from financing and we do all of this, right? We get the net change. That is amount of money going out and amount of money coming in. Now, in 2021, the HUL's net change in cash flow was minus 1,374. That means in the entire year, they had cash outflow more than cash inflow, right? That means they're spending more on something. We can check that. Now, hence the closing balance in 2021 would be obviously 1,374 crores less than the opening cash balance. Now, if you remember, the opening cash balance was 10,600 crores. Now, as you can see, the closing cash balance of HUL in 2021 was 10,606 crores minus 1,374 crores. And that finally comes to 9,232 crores. So this is how we analyze an entire cash flow of a company on the Grow website. So that's it for today's episode. Now you exactly know how to understand financial statements of a company. Now you can also measure the performance by not just reading that, but also understanding their financial statements. And you can not only do this, but you can also expand your knowledge and try to understand a company from all different factors. Now to better measure and evaluate the performance of a company and to compare it to other companies, we need to understand different financial ratios. And don't worry, we will learn all about them in the next few episodes. Okay, so I'm going to see you soon.